The deduction theorem is a central part of pretty much all logics out there. But what is it? How does it work? And how do you prove it? Let me show you. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago, I'm a professor of philosophy in the UK. In this video, I'm gonna be walking you through the deduction theorem and showing you how we go about proving it. This is a follow-up video to the previous one on metalogic, how we go about proving results about logic using logical techniques. There's gonna be a link to it up here somewhere. Maybe you wanna go and have a look at that first and then come back to this one. So if that sounds good to you, do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Okay, so what is the deduction theorem? So in its most basic instance, the deduction theorem is a relationship between entailment here over on the left and validity over on the right. So we've got one premise and one conclusion, and we're saying that A entails B just in case the conditional from A to B, if A then B, is valid. Okay, so just remember that over here, that symbol's meaning entailment, and over here it's meaning validity, which is a kind of entailment, it's entailment with zero premises. Okay, so here, validity of a conditional, if A then B, and here it's an entailment from A to B, A logically entailing B. Now, if you think about it, it's not surprising at all that this is true. If we've got this conditional, if A then B, and it has to be true, if it logically has to be true, what does that mean? Well, it means that A entails B. It means that B follows logically from A. Okay, so this and this have pretty much got to match up. So that's the deduction theorem. And it's an if and only if it goes both ways. If that's true, then that's true. And if that's true, then that's true. And I guess philosophically, the deduction theorem is really important for a logic to have because it kind of relates to the meaning of the conditional, right? So if we had a conditional that could be valid, even though B didn't follow logically from A, well, it might look a little bit too easy for a conditional to be valid. And on the other hand, if B follows logically from A, but that's not captured by a valid conditional, well, we might then question whether that symbol really does capture a genuine notion of logical conditionality at all. Another thing you might notice here is the relationship between this and what we did in natural deduction when we looked at conditional proof. So there, we wouldn't be working with entailments and validities. We'd be looking for things that are provable. Okay, so we'd have this symbol and we'd be saying to prove the conditional if A then B, you've got to show that B follows from A. So you assume A and you get your way to B. If you can assume A and prove B, then you have proved the conditional if A then B. That's basically how conditional proof works. The deduction theorem is saying something very similar, but it's not putting it in terms of proof, it's putting it in semantic terms. So entailment and validity. Okay, so let's look how we would prove this. It's an if and only if, so we've basically got to prove it both ways. We're going to treat it as an if then going one way, and then we'll do the same thing again as an if then going the other way. So for now, let's just start with this side and go to this side. We're going to assume this, and we're going to try and reason our way to this. So the next step is we're going to replace each one of those lines with the definition of entailment for the top and validity down here at the bottom. So that's going to look like this. So now we need to link this line to this line. So I need to show for all valuations, they're going to make the conditional if A then B true. So I have to show that an arbitrary valuation will do that. Now, let's just think, how would an arbitrary valuation, how do we show that an arbitrary valuation makes the conditional true? Well, since we're doing this in propositional logic, we basically use truth tables. So think back to the truth table for the conditional. It's got four lines, three of them, the conditional comes out true. There's only one line where the conditional comes out false. So we want to rule out that line. The line where the conditional, if A then B comes out false, is when A is true and B is false. So the way we can rule out that line is by saying, well, let's assume that A is true 
and make sure that B isn't false. So let's take an arbitrary valuation that makes A true and see what B is going to look like. So we've taken an arbitrary valuation. I haven't written that it's arbitrary, but it's kind of implicit. If you want to remind yourself that it's arbitrary, you can write down, let V be an arbitrary valuation, which sets A to true. That would be fine too. Now, putting that together with the previous line, all valuations that make A true also make B true. So since R, arbitrary valuation, makes A true, it's also going to make B true. So we've shown that if it makes A true, then it makes B true. And from that and the truth table, we can basically rule out the case where if A then B is false. So R, arbitrary valuation, is guaranteed to make if A then B true because it's an arbitrary valuation, this holds for all valuations. So all valuations make if A then B true, and that's basically what it means for the conditional to be valid. Okay, so we assumed an entailment, we've shown the validity, so we've shown if this, then this. So we're one half of the way into proving the deduction theorem. We've shown it from left to right, now we've got to prove it from right to left. The proof from this is pretty much the same thing in reverse. So at this point, why don't you pause the video, have a go at it yourself, give it a few minutes, then come back and see how I do it. Okay, so we're trying to go from here to here. If this, then this. So we're going to assume the if bit and write the then bit down at the bottom of the page. The next two lines are going to be plugging in the definitions of entailment and validity, just like we did before, but in the other order. Now, we're trying to prove something about all valuations that make A true. So we're going to take an arbitrary valuation and assume that it makes A true and try and establish that it makes B true. OK, so how do we link up these two lines here? Well, Basically, we don't really need to do anything because if we look at the truth table, if the conditional's true and A's true, the only way that can happen is when B's true. So in fact, we can move that up there and we're done. This line follows straight from that line. So if you wanted to add a justification in there, you could put like in brackets something like by the truth table for the arrow. You don't really need to do that. But if you're if you're wondering about where that line comes from, that's where it's coming from. Now, I've kind of skipped a line there. We assumed our arbitrary valuation does one thing. We proved it does another. So you could say, so our arbitrary valuation, if it makes A true, then it makes B true. That conditional is true of the arbitrary valuation. I, I skipped that line out and went straight to the for all valuations. So there I'm kind of combining this step of conditional proof with the step of universal introduction. I think it's absolutely fine and standard to include those together. But if you want to st set it out step by step, by all means, go ahead. I think that's that's pretty good practice. So there you have the full proof of the deduction theorem for propositional logic. OK, we did left to right and right to left because it's an if and only if. That's pretty much always going to be the case. If we were working not in propositional logic, but in first order logic or modal logic or whatever, it would be exactly the same thing pretty much apart from rather than using valuations, we will be talking about models or models and possible worlds because the definition of entailment changes a little bit from logic to logic. OK, we don't have valuations in first order logic, but we've got models. So we will be talking about for all models in modal logic. We will be talking about for all models and possible worlds. But pretty much the pattern would be the same in each case. So what we need to take from this is, you know, we don't need to learn this word for word. We're talking about looking at the overall strategy and seeing if we can replicate that kind of strategy whatever kind of question might come up. OK, guys, thank you so much for watching this far. If you have any questions or comments, leave me a line down below. It's always fun interacting with your thoughts. Give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon. I hope to see you guys back next time.